And uh, today we have uh, assembled here to uh, for a very um, uh, what what do I say? Uh, for a very relevant, as I always keep uh, saying it. So I keep saying in the class, guys, you are required to stay relevant. But then now comes the definition: How do you stay relevant? And now to explain to you, to guy, to let you know, uh, let you guys know, what do you mean by staying relevant in the industry? We have uh, taken an initiative as a department to conduct this uh, event, which is called us from corporate to campus, from campus to corporate, bridging the gap. So when we say bridging the gap, what is the gap that we are trying to bridge? We are trying to bridge that gap of skills. So after you complete this four years course or three years course or whatever, you would have acquired theoretical knowledge. But now comes the question, is this theoretical knowledge, is it that all that you require to enter into the industry? Now the answer is no, not sufficient. So therefore, now we have uh, very uh, we have uh, invited uh, uh, Dilip Padki, who is Ernst and Eng, lead financial services, who is going to tell you what exactly are the skills, and also he would share the experience related to what is exactly the gap that he has been observing while he is uh, working in the industry. In the industry, what is the gap that uh, the industry is ac ac uh, ac actually facing? So with this particular uh, few uh, words, I uh, hereby uh, take immense pleasure in inviting our head of the department and as well the chief guest for today's session, Mr. Dilip Apatki, onto the dais. Please. Okay, so now before I hand over the session to uh, Dilip, I hereby uh, uh, wish to uh, introduce with Dilip and also render a little welcome address. So for this particular session, I take immense pleasure in welcoming all of you because you are the beneficiaries of this particular event. So I want all the students to kindly pay attention and make mental notes. If not, note, take a note of it, whatever the key points and the key takeaways. Because each session will be having a key takeaway. What is that key takeaway that we are talking about? And what are the skills that Dilip is going to talk about? I want you guys to make a note of it. Nevertheless, I take pleasure in introducing the chief guest today. And uh, Dilip has over uh, 24 plus years of experience. And I'll take a moment here to uh, express and uh, to uh, let you know what are the kind of experience and what is his core competencies. Right now, he's uh, working in the role of uh, Executive Director of Finance, Financial Services Lead, with 24 plus years of hands-on experience in strategic leadership and driving digital transformation initiatives. He has worked, he has demonstrated success in steering financial growth through adapt management of financial operations, precise budgeting, forward-looking forecasting, and strategic financial planning. And so he has expertise in navigating complex regulatory environments within financial services industry, proficient in optimizing financial process, leveraging technology solutions, and implementing cost-effective measures to enhance organizational efficiency and profitability. Sir has worked in companies like Ernst & Young, Wipro Technologies, Accenture, Dell, GE Capital, Aviva Global Services, to name a few. And uh, with a BE in Environmental Engineering and a Leadership Development Program from IIM, Sir's core competencies lies in the area of strategic leadership, digital transformation, regulatory compliances, strategic partnerships, process pro optimization, organizational excellence, innovation, to name a few. And so with this uh, brief introduction uh, to the lip, I uh, take this um, uh, moment to express deep sense of gratitude to you, uh, Dilip, for accepting our invitation. And I request our head of the department to please uh, welcome Sir with the moment. With the moment, that's a token of uh, welcome in the form of a sapling. I also welcome our uh, head of the department, Dr. B.R. Santosh, and thank him for all the support and uh, assistance provided in organizing such kind of programs. I also uh, welcome all the students and all my colleagues here for this particular session. Now I request Santosh sir, to kindly uh, express a few thoughts on this occasion. Please. 
Good afternoon. I said good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I welcome all of you uh, to this uh, session. And uh, we are also live streaming this uh, session on uh, YouTube. So I also uh, welcome the online audience on uh, YouTube. Um, the world of finance is vast, and so are the opportunities it offers. But as you navigate this exciting landscape, remember that a strong foundation is just the beginning. It is the specialized skills tailored to the specific industries that truly set you apart. Guest lectures like this offer you real-world insights and practical knowledge and expose students to the current trends, challenges, and best practices. So we thought uh, uh, we should have an eminent speaker from um, one of uh, the big four companies. And uh, who better than uh, Mr. Dilip to speak about the skills and uh, the real world uh, insights and the practical knowledge uh, to share about uh, this, uh, we have Mr. Dilip on uh, the stage, and uh, I welcome uh, Mr. Dilip uh, to this uh, session. And uh, we are especially honored uh, to have you, sir. Uh, and uh, I now uh, hand over the session to you. Thank you. Do you have? A Right, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, before we get started, some technical glitches, we'll have that sorted. Can I request all the backbenchers to come a little close to me? You know, I was a backbencher once. Uh, I know what emotions you're going through. <laughs> so, uh, by the way, this is, uh, we're not screening any movie. No Pepsi, no popcorn. It's going to be an interactive session. So backbenchers, there are a few rows available here. Come forward. No. 
Am I audible? Is it better now? Can you hear me? Okay. I think there's some echo. Is it? Okay. Right. Thank you for honoring my request. Uh, I know this is the toughest part of the day post lunch and all of you must be wondering what am I doing here. Um, but I want to thank uh, Mahe, Dr. Shailaja, Dr. Santosh and the other faculties for creating or bringing this industry intervention. Right? Uh, 25 years back I was there, somewhere there. Right? So it's been a very long journey for me and uh, one of the motivating things for you to consider is uh, I was not a sharp student at all, right? So I've had my ups and downs um, during my career, engineering days, whatever it is, right? So do not think that I am, you know, in the top five, top ten um, during my college days or in my professional journey, right? And you will get to hear more about this in the coming few moments, right? Okay, so um, if I were to start this session by saying I have not come prepared for this session because um, you know I've had very busy schedules, my travel, how would you react? What emotions would you be going through now? Shock, okay. Disappointed. Disappointed, awesome, very good. Yeah, you're right. Anyone's getting frustrated? Upset. Upset, okay. Good, what else? Be honest, come on guys, open up. What emotions? I have not come prepared for this 90 minute session. You're all here. Neutral. Okay, that's a nice answer. Okay. Any other answers? Okay, so here's the thing, right? Um, of course, I've come prepared, um, rest assured. <laughs> uh, the reason why I want to bring this analogy is, look at the reactions you have for an external speaker like me. You have invested 90 minutes of this time to listen to what I'm going to say, right? And if I do not, um, you know, have few takeaways for yourselves, then I'm letting you guys down. Is that right? Yeah? Okay. Now, imagine yourself three years down the line when you complete the course or four years, right? And if you are not well prepared to reach the stage when you finish your final year engineering, whom are you letting down? Me? Dr. Shailaja, Dr. Santosh? Very clear? Clear about that? All of you heard what he said? You're letting yourself down, nobody else. Right? Okay, so that's the opening context to what I want to talk about. Right, so, um, you know, we spoke about bridging the gap. Uh, we all acknowledge that there is a gap between academia and corporate world. You would have heard, read many articles, I'm assuming, but we will get into the details of that. Before that, uh, so I did my engineering in uh, Mysore, JC College, and I thought I studied in one of the best colleges in Mysore. I don't know if how many of you have been to JC campus? Okay, Dr. Shailaja has been. Um, it's a beautiful campus, big co campus, sprawling acres of land. And then when I visited this campus, I was in awe, totally awe. This is amazing. You know, I just feel like becoming a student once again uh, to study in this campus. So all of you are really blessed to have this kind of an environment that enables you to study better, right? Um, I did my engineering in environmental engineering. How many of you guys have heard about it? 
it was you know pretty hot way back in you have okay you have okay very few see if i say computer science all hands will go up right um, so this was pretty hot back then and it it still is right but it has its own um, limited views of very restricted colleges courses how you want to pursue your education etc um, so i completed my engineering environmental engineering and jce myself and i wanted to um, do my ms followed by phd in environmental engineering that was the plan um, i got good grades by the way gre tofil and my engineering so i went to chennai for uh, to get the visa to do my masters uh, i got 50% scholarship from university of texas arlington um, so it was a counter visa counter visa is you don't have to get grilled by the american inside so based on your creds they'll tell okay your visa is done right so i came back to bangalore and 3 days later i got the courier with my passport and a pink slip so they presumed that i'm going to be a potential immigrant because they checked the database both my brothers were in us for 11 to 12 years right so i did not have a plan b um I was working I had quit my job I was so sure that I'm going to get the seat I'm going to do my masters and then PhD everything came crashing down right um and again I'm sharing these insights my real life insights so that it helps you in one way or the other I do not just want to talk about all the positives and glamorous things but these are real lifetime experiences what makes a person right so back then 2001 is when the ites started blooming in india the bpo culture the kpo culture the legal process outsourcing and all that stuff so i got a job in uh, ge uh, hyderabad so i had to relocate and that's how my journey started um if i were to look at my 25 years of work experience the first decade has been in the bpo space right right from taking calls to being a team leader handling quality operations manager avp handling 3000 people running the pnl for the business transition transformation all that stuff right so you grow in that space now at the end of 10th year or so um i mean i was very happy with what i was doing i was handling a pretty big portfolio heading the insurance and reinsurance business um making good money um but then i was not satisfied with uh something was bothering me right so all along in this journey of the first 10 years while i was doing transition or transformation from outside india to india moving the jobs basically there's a very strong it component which you get exposed to and in my experience i felt that i did not have that experience from an it perspective right so i consciously changed lines from its to it after having worked 10 years so it's as good as almost restarting your career in the it world right so i took a pay cut and i joined vipro technologies as a program manager they wanted me to handle a banking client uh, from london this was way back in 2007 and when i joined wipro along with me recession also joined right i don't know how many of you are familiar about 2008 recession your parents will definitely know ask them right one of the worst times uh, for indian organizations you should ask you know um i'll give you an example it's pretty scary so when i used to go to wipro technologies floor they used to have these automatic uh, light sensors right every i mean you have to have huge working space i mean uh, bigger than this and every floor so you will see certain pockets of the floor space where the light is not lit during the entire day now what does that talk about people are not going that side there's nobody i mean there are layoffs happening so it's getting quieter and quieter the workspace is getting really quiet you will see less people on the floor less people in the bus 
less people in the canteen. You don't know what's going to happen to you. Right? So that was the 2008 recession. It created a huge impact. Right? So around that time, there was an opportunity for me. Uh, there was an insurance deal that we were working in Johannesburg. They wanted me to go and front end that discussion. We cracked it. So I was leading that account based out of Johannesburg. Um, and that's how my journey started in the IT world. So six and a half years, I was in Wipro Technologies. Um, and that gave me a good exposure to what IT side of the world is. What do they do? Infrastructure, development, testing, environment support, all that stuff. The emerging technologies way back then. You're talking about .NET, Java, and all that stuff. Now, of course, it's all different. We talk about Gen AI, um, right? Chat GPT and all that. <clears throat> so from then on, I think there was no looking back. I got some of the meatiest roles to play with. I was in uh, Pune for four years, heading the finance transformation program for a company called Maersk. Anybody heard about Maersk? What is it? Logistics. Perfect, shipping and logistics company, right? They're number one in the world. So uh, we had to rejig the entire organization, not just GCC, Global Capability Center, but on-site as well. And then I was with Accenture and now with EY, right? So that's a bit about uh, my profile. And I wanted to share these real-time insights. Uh, you know, yeah, one thing, um, you know, um, which I want to emphasize is the last line that is mentioned there. There's a reason why I put that up. You have very few engineers who are finance professionals. You know, typically, if you look at, uh, you know, BCom, then you have CA or CPA, and then you get into that line, that stream, and then you become a finance professional, right? The reason why I have that over there is it's never too late for you to diversify your portfolio, right? Very recently in um, one of the articles I read in LinkedIn, uh, it was an HBR uh, article. They talk about career portfolio, right? It is not about, hey, what are you doing in your career? It's about portfolio. What all have you done, right? So think from that perspective. So. Just, just by doing BCom does not limit you to think in FNA space, right? There's a whole world out there. You can get into computers, you can do marketing, you can do technology, whatever. Whatever your passion or interest lies in. Do not be, do not put those blinders saying, okay, you know what, this is only the path I have. That's not right. Okay, so what are we gonna achieve? Um, you know, we're going to talk about some of the gaps. Um, I'm going to cover some career-specific practical recommendations during the course of time. We're going to talk a bit about interview. And lastly, my specialty, which is consulting. Important for you to know what consulting is, what we do there. Right? I'll just give you a quick flavor of that. Okay. So do you guys relate to this? <laughs> You don't want to see the tomorrow. Just, just be there in yesterday. But yeah, this is the reality. This is the reality, right? Our Indian education system um, does not make any effort to bridge that gap. So we have, uh, you know, professors, the educational institution leaders who try to bridge that gap. There is a gap, right? So. Um, what is the gap? I mean, we talk about campus to corporate, uh, you know, all these kind of concepts. So let's go, let's take two steps back. Before you, how, all of you are in the first year BCom? Right? Okay, cool. First year, second year. Oh, okay, lovely. Oh, okay, cool. So, you know, when you joined this college, recollect that first few days, how was it? Butterflies in the stomach? Yeah. You don't know anybody. What am I doing here? Am I in the right place? Do you recollect those days? Yeah. No, you don't? You're pretty cool? OK, well settled, awesome. But vast majority of us would have those uh, you know, uneasy feeling. What am I doing here? Will I find my friends and all that stuff, right? So 
when you get into a corporate world, it's going to be no different. Right? It's the same emotions you go through, but by now you would have mastered it because you would have changed schools, you would have changed colleges, and now you're doing your graduation here. You kind of know the trick how to handle that bit, right? So can anyone talk to me about how you guys adapted when you joined this college? What were the experiences you went through for the benefit of the rest? Did you raise your hand? Not you, behind you. I just saw her raise the hand, but I want you to talk. Tell me. Go ahead. No, you don't have to stand. Sit down. How was your first few days in this college? I, you have to be loud. Everybody has to hear you. You have to make your presence felt, right? After 20 years, you're going to be here. Yes? Yeah, come on, go for it. Weather. College. Okay. <laughs> I love to make it easy for you, so go for it. It was nice. I okay. liked the environment of the college, okay. the professors, everybody, and my uh, made friends. <laughs> okay. So you had a friend, so it kind of became easy. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Anybody else wants to share? Okay. I have one more hand. Go up. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so for the first few days, okay. I felt like uh, when I entered over here, I took a lot of time to process stuff. The thing was, I did not see uh, other like hundreds of people like me. I saw 100 different minds over here. Wow. So okay. at that time, I was trying to take inputs from everyone. I was trying to understand like what other fields people are coming from, what backgrounds they have, and what are their future plans. So I took all the three to four days just to take inputs from okay. people in that. Thank you. Awesome. Good. Any other thoughts? Okay. So, um, you know, before we understand the relevance of the gap, uh, you know, I just want to bring it this, these points to your notice. This is basically some of the paper clippings which I have collected, which I had collected some time back. So just put it on this slide. Uh, what catches your attention here on this slide? What am I trying to communicate? Just read some of the headlines. COVID, okay, cool. Recession, okay. What did COVID do? Right in the center, I have this one bold. What is great resignation? Yeah, layoffs is a byproduct of great resignation. But what is great? Why is it called the great resignation? What's so great about it? Yeah, kind of happened everywhere, yes. There were no, um, okay, okay, fine. Anybody else? Any other thoughts from this side of the hall? Yeah, that's a good point. People living in mass. The great resignation, I won't ask you this time. Anybody else? Guys, you don't have to be so serious. Relax. You're not being evaluated here. Just give it a try. There was no mobility. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so here's what the great resignation is. So all of us did experience the horrid. For the rest of my life, I would want to ensure that I have a quality life. I don't mind compromising, cutting corners. But I will not work nine hours a day. I'm going to work four hours for this organization. I'm OK to take salary worth four hours per day. I will cut corners. I'll stay in a smaller apartment, I'll, you know, less luxury, whatever it is. But I want to live my life. Because COVID brought about so much of uncertainty about life itself, right? So that's what the great resignation is. So you had a lot of folks in US cut down their hours, number of hours working. Some of them said, you know, whatever money I have made, that's enough for me. I'm not going to work anymore. They will go to some remote part of US or anywhere, settle down there. 
those numbers are unbelievably huge. We're talking about lakhs and lakhs of people in just few weeks' time, right? So that created a lot of pressure for India because India is where the supply is. Is that right? The demand comes mainly from US and EMEA. Here we have the hub of supply, all of us. So you can imagine the impact India went through during COVID days. To your point, mobility was a challenge. You know, you're not able to communicate effectively. Everything is in virtual world. And then on top of it, you have a hell of a lot of work coming our way, which is also good. That kind of brought up Indian economy big time during COVID days, right? So that is the great resignation, right? Um, before I move on, you know, I just want to hear from you guys. You know, Dr. Shailaja was talking about the gap we have. I have, I have mentioned that a couple of times in the last 10 minutes. But I want to understand from you guys, do you see a, do you see a, you know, or foresee a gap? You know, let's say two years from now you graduate um, and then you get campus hired in, let's say, EY, Ernst & Young. You join the organization. Do you see that there's a gap in all your, you know, 16, 18 years of academic stint, and then you move into the corporate world? Is there a gap? Yeah? I see a few heads nodding. OK. Let's acknowledge that there is a gap. That's the most important thing, right? There is a gap. Right. OK. So a few things I've put up in this slide, uh, which I would want to cover. Um, I mean, this might be like, oh, what is this guy talking about? But believe me, when you're in a corporate world, uh, it's a different ball game. Everything matters. You are continuously being evaluated. When I talk to my boss, you know, I sense that he's continuously evaluating me. It's always like that, right? So how you come across, not just by the, your dressing sense, but choice of words, how you interact, all that matters. All that matters. Make use of your coming years in this campus as a playground to master these things. That's my request to you. Right? You can brush it off saying, okay, yeah, one more afternoon post-lunch session, but don't learn the hard way. Make it easy for yourselves. Right? Okay, so I'm going to touch a bit about everything. Uh, I can share the pack with um, you know, Dr. Shailaja and Dr. Santosh. They can make this content available to you guys. Cool. So how important is this? Looks very fundamental and basic. Is that right? But how many of you have got handshakes which, uh, you know, when you shake the hand of the other person, it's not firm, but you kind of feel, oh, man. You've had those encounters, experiences? And some people never look into your eye. I don't know why. What does that talk about? When somebody does not look into your eye and talk, what does that talk about? Lack of? Yeah? Right? Of course, tonality, right? Uh, we love to be soft-spoken. We are Indians. Um, we kind of maintain a soft tone. But certain times, certain situations, when you have to convey a message, you'll have to use a slightly aggressive, assertive tone. Not ag aggressive, but assertive tone. Right? So these things definitely matter in a corporate world, which is not being taught in your academic curriculum at all. Nobody is going to come and cover this in your final year. So it's up to you how you're going to master some of these things, right? Again, on the communication skills. How many of you read today's newspaper? What's the headline? Come on, become students. Forget Times of India. OK, sorry, forget Economic Times. Times of India. No? Bangalore Mirror? Ha, ah, OK. Good. You saw it on the news channel, right? Insta reel. I got it. <laughs> but yeah, so how, how are you going to enhance your vocabulary, your communication skills? 
Insta will not help you that. Right? You, you got to read newspapers. How many of you are on LinkedIn? I saw a lot of invites from Mahe. Yeah, yeah, quite a few, right? I got the invites. Thank you for that. Um, you know, subscribe to some good reviews like Harvard Business Review, um, some management, program management, technology, finance, follow companies like EY, Deloitte, PwC, find out what they're doing, right? Only when you are in touch with the industry, with the economy, then you will stay relevant. Otherwise, you'll get phased out. Sit down. Okay, uh, this is a pretty interesting one, right? So if you want to write, you need to read. If you want to speak, you need to listen, right? Okay, um, again, some of the companies invest in this kind of training when you join as part of their orientation program. Off late, we are seeing some changes because your interaction is gonna be with some of the tough customers. Let's say you've been put on a um, engagement where you have to travel to Japan frequently. All right? Japanese clients are the toughest clients by far. Very tough to crack, right? In the sense, they take a lot of time to trust you and believe that, yeah, you are the man who is going to deliver projects for me. It's not easy. Easiest is? Which region? America, right? Easiest are American clients. They're very easy going, uh, you know, very informal. You can gel well, party. But at the same time, uh, their way of working is when things don't go well, you'll have to hear the unpleasant words very frequently. That's the way they operate, right? So we talk about, you know, email etiquettes. Um, and you will you will have to invest some time to really understand what I'm talking about here. This might sound a bit trivial here, trivial here but um, you know, some of the campus hires in my team, uh, I've seen some of the odd emails that get sent across uh, without a proper addressing. Uh, you know, they use a lot of, this generation uses a lot of um, abbreviation, right? Um, a lot of, you know, you'll be like, you have to figure out what is this person trying to tell me? It's like, uh, you know, Morse code kind of a thing. Uh, but, well, those things will not fly in corporate world. Uh, so you have to be really clear and fluent in, in what you're trying to communicate uh, in your emails, right? And in, in, mo in most of the multinationals which you will be working in, primarily email will be the main mode of communication. You will also have calls, team calls, client calls, project calls, all that stuff. But otherwise, your work will be mainly on emails. So master that. Um, you know, I have, I have experienced a lot of unpleasant um, situations. A lot of people dial in into calls. They don't mute. Um, and, you know, they keep talking to their neighbors or the do dog keeps barking. You know, these things, um, some people learn when they're being told, some people will never learn, right? So don't be on the wrong side of these things and get noticed for the wrong things, right? These are all basic hygiene things which all of us need to know. Again, you're talking about meeting, right? Uh, there's a reason why Dr. Shailaja insisted that I should be here at 1.30. I'm respecting all of your time. We start the session at 2.00. How will it be if I arrive at 2.15, saying, hey, sorry, Dr. Shalajah, you know, traffic. That's the most common excuse in Bangalore, right? Traffic. I got stuck in traffic, right? I stay some 45, 50 kilometers from here, by the way. So I started at 12. So there's a reason why all these things are to be done. You've got to be organized. You have to respect other people's time, right? These things are not taught. And of course, cross-culture, most important. The world is shrinking. Do you agree? 
The world is shrinking. When I say world is shrinking, what do you mean? What do you understand? All the cultures, all the Netflix and Prime and what all you see, we, we know a lot of things that happens outside India. Right? We're getting a flavor and taste of the cultures outside India. And that is good in a way for you to take the next step whenever, you know, when you study or join a corporate. Okay, so um, in Indian education, we are, we are taught to start by saying, I did this. Is that right? Yeah, because you have to take the credit. Yeah, so, but in the corporate world, it's slightly different. Yeah, not that every time you're gonna say we, but um, most of the time it is the collaborative work that gets recognized. It is not about the individual work, right? So there's a change in the way you need to operate. You will use I for your appraisal discussions. But otherwise, in your day-to-day -day conversations, you know, when you're talking to your peers or your leaders in the organization, it's not about I. I did this. Uh, well, dude, who are you? Right? You, you get noticed in the wrong manner. It's all about we. Okay, yeah, so, um, you know, 25 years of my experience, at least I've gone through more than 25 cycles of appraisal, having interesting and some tough discussions. That is part and parcel of life, right? Some of the things which I wanted to share with you is, um, there, are, there are few things which are said and few unsaid. Important for you to know, right? Um, for example, it is in your interest to know what is your role in this organization, right? Who are you in this team? What do you do? What are the expectations? Um, you know, what does the organization expect from you? What does your manager expect from you? Nobody wants to have that tough conversation. You know, for example, there is a lot of hesitancy in asking my manager, hey, what do you expect from me? There is a lot of hesitation from the manager to tell, hey, from you, I need these 10 things. You know, if life goes on, everybody's pretty happy. But things are changing in corporate world, right? So there are your goal sheets for the year, for the quarter. You're being measured on a quarterly basis, on a monthly basis. So they track how effective you are, what are your contributions, what have you done. And it is just not about the metrics. But are you a team player? What have you contributed in? You know, in bringing the team together, bonding the team, uh, you know, there are a lot of, have you heard about white paper? White papers? So white papers is basically a journal, right? So you take a subject, a topic, and then you write about it, your understanding on that su subject. For example, let's say RPA, right? So I can write a white paper based on my 25 years of work experience, what RPA is all about. So all these things get measured um, in the corporate world. Um, and the most interesting part is beyond work. So you have certain things that you need to do. Everything is black and white in the gold sheet. But what beyond that? What can you contribute, right? Uh, so is there a, a session by the placement cell on the interviewing skills? There is, OK. So I'll give this a skip, right? OK, so I spoke about newspaper. Now I'm coming to books. So how many, have, uh, how many of you have reading habits? OK. Which book are you reading? Fiction. Okay, lovely. Who is your favorite author? It's okay. Be loud. Okay. Got it. Okay. Anybody else? How many of you have never read a book? Hey, awesome. I love this crowd. 
it's still not too late. Right? It's still not too late. So the sooner you start engaging yourself on reading books, the better it is for you. Right? You get different perspectives. And again, it goes back to your communication skills, your vocab, all that stuff. Right? And you might think, oh my god, my portions are so much. I don't have time for my portions itself. And what is this guy talking about reading books? Yeah, possible. You can make time for this. Right? So, couple of key actions from this session. What's the first one? Newspaper. Perfect. Two? Will you take that as an action? Sure. It's not going to help me. It's going to help yourselves. Okay? Okay. So, uh, you know, there's this, uh, some of you might have seen this video in Insta or YouTube in one form or the other. It's about an, it's about eagle. The lifespan of an eagle is supposed to be around 70 years. Okay? When it reaches around 40 years, uh, it has to take a decision. The eagle has to take a decision whether it wants to renew another 30 odd years or not. And how is it going to do it? So the eagle secludes itself from the community, goes far away into the Himalayas, um, and it breaks its own beak by banging against the rock. Right? So the beak is broken. Um, then it waits for the new beak to grow. Once the new beak is grown, then it plucks all the feathers. So it's completely bald. Then it waits for the feather to grow. Most painful experience is what this eagle goes through. It's a course of 150 odd days, this entire journey. No food, no water. Because the minute the eagle comes out with broken beak or cannot fly, then it's exposed, right? It gets sprayed. So this 150 days is the personal transformation this eagle has to go through. Once the you know, feathers are back, it takes that leap of faith and starts the second life or the journey. That's another 30 odd years or so. Right? And there's a reason why I say this. This uh, painful personal transformation we all go through in some form or the other. You just have to be present to it, what you're going through. It could be in your academic life, personal life, professional life. Right? There are certain changes which the environment forces you to make, or there are certain decisions which you take which helps you enable your own personal transformation. You just have to be cognizant of that fact that, yes, there is some, some change going on in me. And that is for the betterhood of the coming days and years in some form or the other. Right? Okay, so what do we got here? Um, I know most of you are first year BCom, but the message is mainly for the final year students. But at, nonetheless, the first message is expand your skills and knowledge. Can somebody talk to me about some of the emerging technologies in the market? AI, okay. What else? Okay. Guys, come on. You can't be silent. This is a hot topic. Huh? Fintech, okay. Are you guys planning to work after your course or? Your father's made a lot of money, just go settle down, Australia, New Zealand. You have working plans? Go, talk to me. Tell me. Emerging technologies. Okay, blockchain. Yeah. What else? Okay, all of you are in uh, BCom. Is that right? Talk to me about, name some fintech tools. 
which is used in FNA processes. That's not a tool. That's a technology. Okay. Very fundamental, but good. Yes, Microsoft, Power BI, okay. Tool. Mm, okay. Hmm. Huh? Sorry? No, no. No. Tools, tools. Come on, guys. So now you guys are exposed. Do you agree? You have no idea what I asked. You have no idea what you're answering. Is that right? Yeah, this is the gap I was talking about. Right? This is exactly the gap I was talking about. So in the FNA process, of course, you will, you will start experiencing. Have you heard about OTC? Huh? P2P? What is P2P? Crypto? No, no. P2P. No, no, no. <laughs> ATR? Okay. O2C is order to cash. Order to cash. These are finance processes in any organization. Right? P2P is procure to pay. Vendor management. Right? ATR is accounting through reporting, where you do your HQ reporting, which is headquarter reporting. Right? So these are your finance processes. And they should be very close to your heart, what happens in O2C, P2P, R2R. Then when you know this layer, you will have to do a double click on O2C. What is order to cash? Not that you have to answer, I'm just telling. Right? What are the various sub-processes within O2C? What tools are being used in the market? Who are the various vendors catering to order to cash tools? Have you heard about collections management? Collections? Collections process? Okay. Chalo. Uh, you guys have... How many of you have a bike? On loan? Rich parents here, seriously. Okay, fine. I have my car. I have taken loan. Okay? I'm a defaulter. Last three months, I was not able to pay my EMI. Last three months, I was not able to pay my car EMI. What's going to happen? Seize the vehicle. There's one step before that. So the bank will start chasing me for collections. Right? They'll, they'll have a grace period, which is called consequence management. If I cross that, then they're going to send the collectors home. They'll say, hello, guys. What's up? Do we, uh, you know, sell your house, gold, jewelry, dogs, pets, whatever it is, right? So that is a collections process. That is a very crude example which I gave so that you can relate to. But in corporate world, um, let's talk about, uh, let's say, Maersk, the company I worked for, shipping and logistics. So we deal with billions of dollars for our end customer. We have to get that money because we have transported, you know, one truckload of whatever from A to B. They have to pay us, right? And do you think they normally pay us on time? Of course not. They will not, right? Because if they have that cash in their bank account, they earn the interest. So they'll try to pay on the last day, or they're generally defaulters. You have to chase them, chase them. That is collections process. I'm just giving an example for you to understand what really happens in the finance world, right? Now, on the other side, let's say, uh, Nike, right? Nike has shipped their stuff uh, to an ex vendor and they have to make the payment out, which is the procure to pay. They have procured the goods, they have to pay out, right? So, for each of these processes, there are certain tools. Uh, you know, when you, when you get into an office environment, you will see everybody is given a laptop. 
fancy laptops, gone are the days of desktops. So what do you do in that laptop? Not just chat with your friends, but the actual work is on these tools. You generate report, you understand, you analyze, you reconcile, are your records matching, right? So that is the actual work of a finance specialist, right? So first point is expand your skills and knowledge. One question I asked is fintech or tools, and you guys were blank, which is fine. But my point is, let this be a wake-up call. You have time. Make use of this time to really what's happening, to know what's happening out there. The second point is mainly around job opportunities. You know, whenever companies come your way, you know, don't be too fixated. I am going to join only UI, nothing else. Well, the market is market has changed in the last, you know, post-COVID, right? Um, just two quarters back, we are slowly recovering from a mild recession. How many of you know that? Yeah, you agree? Last two years was not the best because it just, you know, it was headed to go towards 2008 recession, by the way. But somehow the U.S. market is kind of stabilizing. And we kind of slowly recovering. I can see that in my PNL itself. The loss I took for last six quarters, we are slowly coming out of it, last two quarters. Yeah, third point, of course, you know, cannot be an Amitabh Bachchan saying, you know, I need this, that, that's not going to work. Um, be open to make an entry in any industry. Uh, if you look at, you know, my profile, uh, my career portfolio, it is diversified. Right? Uh, I've been in financial services, I've been in commercial. Maersk is commercial, right? It is not financial services. So don't be too, you know, fixated about, okay, this is the line or the industry I want to pursue. If there are good opportunities, if you have an opportunity to diversify your career portfolio, it's only going to help you. You know, at the end of 10 years, of 20 years, you'll have more experience than one person being in one industry. This much I can guarantee you. Your exposure is uh, more. Um, yeah, again, you know, I spoke about this in the last line, right? So if this can be me, then you guys can definitely be better than me. Right? It's continuous demonstration of uh, what value you bring to the organization. That's all they see. That's all they care about. Uh, and if you are one of those key players who keep demonstrating this time and again every time, your hunger level should be high, appetite to learn, then you're in the right place. Okay, cool. Before I move to the second part of consulting, I'll just give a quick two, three minute break for ourselves to find out what are some of the key takeaways you had from the session so far. Love to hear from the backbenchers, the guy on the mobile. Suddenly everybody gets conscious now. Oh my God, I am. Go for it. Yeah, you. Key takeaways. What have you learned? What's your action? What are you going to do? I can repeat the question. Okay. So I am assuming you are very attentive in the last 45 minutes. Okay. What were some of the key things you learned? What are some of the key things you're going to do? Reading habits? Okay. What else? Okay. How about you? How? Yeah, LinkedIn. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Lady in red. Tell me. Your key takeaways. How? 
what are you going to do? That's more important for all of us. What actions are you going to take? Okay. Okay. You? You. Yeah. Awesome. There's a very good point which you brought about doing some courses. You guys have heard about Coursera, Udemy, there are a lot of courses on LinkedIn. All of you are familiar with that side of the world? Good. Invest your time in that. When you have a LinkedIn profile, you have to make it very enriching. You have to enrich your profile by these you know, course certifications. And it's not necessary that you have to do something in the line which you're already doing. Right? For example, uh, it could be completely different than what you're doing now or what you're studying now. Totally different. It could be something related to law, for example. Doesn't matter. You're just going and tapping that, you know, zone to see, hey, what's happening on that side of the world? Right? Okay. Let me hear from this side. Yeah. My friend. Tell me. Okay, those are some of the actions you're going to take. Okay, any other thoughts? My friend in blue shirt, who's turned behind now. Yeah, you. How many of you hate technology? Hate or not comfortable? All of you are comfortable with technology? Is that right? You love technology? Really? Did this question leak before I came here? <laughs> but yeah, if the answer is yes, you're in a fabulous place. You're in the right place if you love technology. There is no escape to technology, let me tell you. The minute you get into corporate world or start your own business, you will have to start loving technology. Like it or not. Absolutely. Fantastic. So the other way to look, that's a very good point which you brought about. Um, all of you have your friends and cousins who are senior to you. Yeah. And I'm also assuming most, some of your parents will be in the IT sector or whichever sector, doesn't matter, right? Uh, can you make some effort to really understand what they do? Apart from, you know, wiring monthly pocket money, right? Um, what, what do they do? What do they actually do? When they go to office, you should ask them, Dad, Nine hours, what do you do in office? Good question, right? So you got to know what your parents are doing. And that's the first step of exposure. Whichever industry they are, IT, IT is, doesn't matter. Learning profession, whatever it is, right? And then start reaching out to your cousins who are working in multinationals. Hey, dude, what do you do? He'll talk about VLSI, embedded chips. Hey, what did you just say now? Then you're going to ask him, hey, dude, what are you talking Talk to me in English. Then you're going to make effort to really understand what he's doing, which company is he working for, right? Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Okay, so the last 10 minutes before I wrap. Um, so I, I love consulting, right? Uh, I'm very passionate about what I do. And I wanted to share these few slides in case there is some 
uh, element of interest in this world of consulting. But before that, let me ask you guys, what is consulting? Give me some examples of consulting. Real-time examples. Perfect. So you go to a doctor. What does a doctor do? Huh? You go to a doctor, and then doctor is going to ask you some questions. Correct. That's a lovely word. Yeah. You're going to interact. The questions he has asked, you're going to answer. And then what is he going to do towards the end? Prescribe. Yeah, perfect. Any other such examples, real time? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Repeat that on mic. Guys, pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, yeah, uh, so it can be like of formal and informal. Yeah. So like if I'm helping a friend, uh, that can be informal, and if I'm going to a person, that can be like formal. Yeah. Okay, any other thoughts? Guys, important for you to know, this side of the world, consulting. Hmm? Break? Predictive. Okay, okay. Huh? Chartered accountants, um, not, okay. That's finance consulting. So basic consulting, okay. So, uh, have you heard about Big Four? Raise your hands. How many of you know Big Four? Okay, keep your hands straight. What is Big Four? Yeah, you, lady in red. You didn't raise your hand, that's why I asked you. Yeah? Which are the Big Four companies? Homework? You'll find out in the next 30 minutes. All right, which are the big four, guys? You got it? EY, PwC, KPMG, and Deloitte. They're called big four. So why is it called big four? Any idea, guys? Be with me here. Why is it called Big Four? Top four accounting firms in the world. That takes a lot. What is the revenue of EY? I cannot disclose because I'm getting recorded, but go find out, <laughs> right? No comments on that number, but anyway. Uh, so these are huge companies, right? And not just big four. You talk about Accenture. Uh, there are a lot of new consulting firms, boutique firms. So if you have an interest um, in solving problems, not mathematical or physics problems, but I'm saying in general in life, let's say a friend comes to you and says, hey, you know what, you know, to the point which he was brilliantly mentioning, Formal, informal, right? If somebody really looks up to you saying, hey, dude, uh, you know, this is what I'm going through. What do you think I should do? And you bring in all your philosophy and gyan and share some thoughts, some methodology you will construct, right? That's a good starting point. We do it in a more refined manner, but I'm saying that's a good starting point, right? So if you have that ability to solve problems, and if that's there in you to kind of, you know, you should have that uh, urge, you know, to ask the clients, hey, what's really your problem? And I do that. When I go to client meetings or discussions, I ask them, hey, what are your pain points? What's really bothering you? What's causing you sleepless nights? They'll give you a long list of issues. That is not working, this is not working, these are some of the problems the organization is facing, etc. And if you have the appetite to really you know, start prioritizing them and start attacking them, addressing them one by one, then consulting is going to be very enjoyable career prospect for you guys. Yeah? 
there are various frameworks, methodologies. Have you guys heard about design thinking? Okay, so I have a request from all of you guys. Uh, today is Wednesday, right? Okay, cool. Uh, we have four days. Before Monday, I want you guys to do a course on design thinking. Doable? Yeah? It's not going to take much of your time. But you will be exposed to some amazing problem solving concepts. Okay, four days, more than enough. Okay, before Monday morning. Okay, so um, some of the things which keeps us going. You know, I just cannot walk into a room and say, uh, sorry, which business are you doing? What do you do? Uh, no, it's not going to work. So I got to do my homework before I do any consultative uh, conversations with the client. So I have to know my client, you know, their p &L, their problem statements, their financials, before I even go for a conversation, right? You got to know the industries, the latest trends, again, last four quarters, last, last 10 quarters, how are they performing? Which quarters have gone well, which have not, why? Okay, you got to, uh, of course, eventually you will, as you scale up, you, got, you will be interacting with the C-suite, right? The CXOs of the companies. So, you, so CTO's agenda is different, CFO's agenda is different, CIO's agenda is different. So you got to fine tune your conversation <laughs> points depending on whom you're going to interact with, right? CFO advisory is completely different. If you go and talk to a CFO about CIO spend, him like, dude, what are you doing here, right? You got to be sensitive to that. Uh, again, most important, listening skills and interviewing skills. You know, you just can't rattle out long list of questions to a C-suite executive. You have to carefully kind of get the information you need in that limited period of time you have, right? And that's an art. You will learn that. Of course, uh, this is one of the techniques, right? Why, what, how? When you start probing, you get more and more answers. Again, yeah, this is a, a good point. So how many of you like number crunching? How many of you love data? <coughs> I was expecting more hands to go up because you guys are doing BCom, yeah. commerce. Commerce is all about numbers. Or am I missing something? Has the curriculum changed? Sure. Guys, how many of you like Excel? Ah, slightly better. Good, good. Excel is your bread and butter. So if you do not know Excel, go join a course over the weekend. Start loving it. The sooner you start loving it, it's better for you. Right? Yeah, 80-20 rule. Anybody wants to quickly talk about what's 80-20 rule? Somebody is giving it a try. Okay. Third homework, design thinking, Excel, 80-20. Pareto analysis, do you guys know Pareto? Okay, no problem. That's the third homework, 80-20, okay? Okay, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, one of the points, there's a reason why I mentioned the telegraphic. You know, you would have come across friends, um, who love to talk to you in a very soft, boring tone for on and on, trying to just convey that something is not working well and you'll be almost asleep. You have friends like that? Well, in corporate world, you got to be really crisp. Brevity is essential, right? Uh, whatever you communicate, whatever you want to communicate, you have to stick to the point. Very crisp communication. Some people love to make it flowery, but you know, you just lose the person. Uh, when I see the person coming from the other side of the corridor, I'll probably just head out the other way. You don't want that, but you will come across such people. Uh, you might have people in your team or your boss. If it's your boss, good luck. Uh, but if it's part of your team, at least you can give feedback and correct them. Uh, yeah, so other than Excel, PowerPoint presentations. Okay, few hands. Oh, good, good, lovely. Yeah, nice. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the list goes on and on. Um, uh, 
uh, what's this OTSW analysis? Ah. So, Dr. Shalaja, they answered the last point, last question I had in today's session. Okay. So, with that, uh, this session comes to an end. Um, I would like to answer a few questions from you guys before I call it a wrap. Yeah. Uh, you need a mic? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, bad experience. So, okay. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, hi. In one of the statements, uh, you have told that zero uh, hmm. experience is bad experience, and we know that uh, moving from college to corporate, uh, there's so much difference. Yeah. And as a BCom first year student, uh, is there any uh, uh, suggestions from you that I can make my zero experience to some experience? by the time I reach end of my fourth year. Yeah, okay, uh, good point, fantastic. So what I meant by zero experience is bad experience is uh, when you finish your curriculum, graduation, right? From then on your time starts ticking if you do not have an offer in hand. That's the reality, whether you like to hear this or not, right? So there are two parts to it. How prepared are you, how relevant are you to crack that campus interview? Two, if you do not get an opportunity through campus, don't waste further time. Either you continue your studies by doing masters or use your network, build that network now so that you get an internship or an opportunity through your friends, relatives, contacts. Nobody is going to come and rescue you if you are not campus placed. That's the reality, right? So you got to find your ways and means of how you're going to get a job. That blank period, is what I'm refer referring to as zero experience. You're graduated, but you don't have a job. I've been through that. It's not easy, right? So you got to build your network, find out various companies who offer internship, whether they can absorb you. And that's where the other points, like do not be very particular about pay package, industry, companies, just make a start. Just make a start. Then you'll figure out in five, 10 years' time. But if you become very choosy, then your blank period keeps increasing. And that is not good. That is not good. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, sir, I have a small problem. Uh, basically, we talked about Coursera and all the other stuff. Uh, the thing is, uh, on Coursera and everything, we, got, uh, we get like good courses. But I feel like uh, when I go through YouTube, a few quality content also I get through some channels. Mm -hmm. The problem is on Coursera, I feel like sometimes uh, we don't really have good teachers in the sense the ones who are teaching are not not that good from whom I should, I mean, I'm not able to learn from them. Basically, there's a YouTuber from whom I'm able to learn properly. The thing is, I don't want a person who is uh, best at what he's doing. I want a person who is best at teaching it. The thing is, if I learn from YouTube, I don't get certifications and everything. So, like, what should I do for this? Yeah. So, my advice would be, you know, to balance it out. Uh, my son relies heavily on YouTube to learn contents. He's found some amazing professors and, you know, he keeps referring to YouTube channels, right? Uh, while you continue to do that to enhance your skills, it's equally important to demonstrate what you have learned to the external world. And that is through these certification programs. Right? So, have a right balance of it. Um, yeah. yeah. Hi. What's that one book that we can take as consulting enthusiasts uh, to gain upon our consulting skills? Oh, uh, okay. Um, one book for consulting. Um, okay, let me, okay, my slides are out. Um, difficult to really pinpoint and say this is the book for consultants. If you look at, one way to look at it is any of the autobiographies, for example, Michael Dell or Ford, uh, they, they talk 
about what the person's hardships were and how he or she have gone through that phases of their career journey, right? At the same time, how they stood up the company, what did they do, do during the downtime, the worst of the worst when they had to sell their organizations, and how they came back again. So you will get a flavor of management and consulting. I would, I would recommend these kind of autobiographies uh, than a generic management book, which becomes too dry. You will not be able to relate to it, right? So I think that would be a good starting point. Um, GE, Dell, Ford, you can pick up these three books. Okay, sir, thank you. Hi. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So, sir, as you said that, uh, we should not narrow it down to just BCom, hmm. but we should learn whatever we want to learn, different fields. Yeah. But being in second year in BCom, if I want to study like, let's say, artificial intelligence or law, whenever I try it, it feels like uh, there's no time for that, right? Like, yeah. if I divert to like, let's say law, then my BCom course will be left over. Yeah, so... Uh, How to like manage being... Right. And expand your skills, yeah. So, time is limited, agree? I wish we had 36 hours in a day. Uh, and time management is one of the subjects that's been hashed out by every management guru, uh, how to effectively manage your time. But I think it, it boils down to discipline, right? What you want to do, what you want to achieve. Um, and I can talk about myself. Um, so I'm a, I've been into running for more than 15 years now. Uh, I'm an ultra runner. Uh, from last two years, I started doing triathlons, half Ironman, right? I start my day at 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I consciously try to hit the bed by 10.30, right? Sometimes it's not possible. It doesn't matter. Before I'm up, my workout starts at 4.45, 5 in the morning. Swimming, cycling, running, whatever I do, strength training, every day, right? And I've been doing this for years now, right? The days I don't do, I get irritated. My wife tells me, please go and do your workout. Right? So you, it, it's part of your DNA. You've got to carve out time for yourself. Nobody will do it for you. You are not going to get extra hours in a day. Right? So I am very passionate about my health. And I believe if I am healthy, I can take care of people around. So I invest that time for myself. Right? So I'm very passionate about it. So if, if you guys are passionate about doing something, for example, the course which you're doing, that has to drive you to get up or make time. Then time will get created, isn't it? I mean, we all would have done so many mischievous things during our college days. How do we create time for that? You still have to study your tests, exams, but still we do, right? Same way. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anything else, guys? Okay. Round two. Go for it. Sir, uh, is there any uh, internship programs in EY? Yeah. If yeah, how do we get into those? Like, what are the required skill, uh, skill sets? Yeah. So, uh, EY does a lot of uh, campus uptake. Uh, you know, I was just talking to Dr. Santosh and Dr. Sarija, BCom grads, uh, MCom, uh, CAs, uh, engineers, MBAs, right? Uh, the year-on-year -year campus strategy varies because uh, of the global economy. If, if everything is great, then the uptake is in huge number, thousands, uh, across India. Um, so the process is, uh, Typically, we come to campus institutions for you know, campus placements, campus hiring. That's one way. Uh, we also do internship um, uh, you know, through recommendations. It is not an open thing out there, but any of the big four, if you go, if you know anybody there, then they can kind of 
channelize the internship program and if there is a requirement in any of the functions or sub-functions within the company. Yeah. Hello, sir. So I wanted to ask about the what you actually did in your first year when you were in job, in your internship. If you did yeah. an internship, how was it and how did you get it? How did you land on it? Yeah, yeah. so uh, during those days, we didn't have anything called internship. We just had to do one project, final year engineering project. Um, yeah, but then uh, after my engineering, when I joined GE, uh, you know, it was a completely different world. I still remember the day one when we walked onto the floor, we saw thousands of desktops, AC building, I mean, all these things might sound silly to you guys now, but you know, way back, 25 years back, you're like, man, where am I? It was like a whole you know, new, different you know, workplace, right? Um, it took a lot to really kind of, uh, you, you know, you're, you're very raw, crude, because you do not have that corporate experience, and that's natural. So you get kind of hammered here and there, and finally, you kind of find a nice sweet spot for yourself, right? It was not easy uh, working in, um, I was with aircraft engines, which runs on 12 Sigma. Um, one of the toughest processes, right? Uh, and my boss was extremely uh, hard to work with. So if you find those kind of bosses who are very extremely hard to work with, it's good learning experience in your early stage of career, because you will know you can handle them at later point in time. Um, but it's all about you know, um, understanding that yes, I have scope to learn, I want to learn, there is something that he's trying to tell me. So if you have that kind of um, a mindset, it becomes more easy to operate. Um, but if you're very rigid, then it's gonna be conflicting views, conflicting discussions, uh, that will not go well down the line. So what was basically your job, like first day job, what did you learn from it? Okay, so the first few days we had, uh, first two, three weeks we had orientation program. Any corporate you join, they will introduce you to the company. That's the first thing they do. So they'll have an orientation session. They'll talk all about the company, how big we are, how global we are, what we do, you know, uh, all that stuff. So that will give you a holistic view of the organization you work for, which is very important. The second orientation is, okay, so you are now being positioned in, let's say, um, uh, technology consulting and for gen AI practice. I'm just giving an example, right? So technology consulting will have the second layer of orientation session. They'll introduce you to what technology consulting is all about. What do we do? Then you're going to have a third level of orientation session for the team you work for, Gen AI. What do we do there? These are the various projects. These are the various clients. This is the nature of work. So it's going to be a, the first two, three weeks is all about absorbing the various you know, orientation sessions from an organization to a sub-practice to your team. That's all it's going to be. Once you familiarize that, then you're assigned to a particular manager, then you're part of the team, you understand, you're, you're part of the team meetings, then your manager is gonna tell you, you know what, uh, why don't you buddy up with somebody? It's called a shadow, right? They will not put you on to work immediately because you have a lot to learn. So they'll ask you to shadow with a senior. You're gonna sit next to the senior and say, hey, what is he doing? What are you doing? You're gonna ask questions. That's how we learn. And then bits and pieces work will be assigned to you. That's how you so grab. Do you think this is now applicable to the senior? I think the seniors get much irritated while if someone is there in for internship. Like if I want to learn, they'll like know like they should know. The intern should know what they want to do. They don't they should not disturb the senior. It's like this in this culture or no, 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 no. So in corporate um, there will be a dependency on your senior. Uh, the person who has been in the organization, the person who is already doing that work, right? So you are dependent on him to learn, and it is his or her job to teach you or coach you. Because there are certain ways of working, and you have to get used to that. You have to learn that. 
So, sir, as an MCOM first year, uh, my friend is also here. So, next month we are going to have an internship program that we are needed to join mm -hmm. in a company. Lovely. So, I am really like we are getting anxiety attacks in the nights thinking about it, mm -hmm. and we honestly didn't do much in our BCOMs. Okay. I was doing my CA and CS also I was doing, but dropped it out mm -hmm. because of some reasons. Uh, came to Manipal. I'm now doing all the research and everything that we are going on, assignments are going on. And now the internship is approaching, like we are going to have our finals next month. So like, I don't know how we should proceed with it. Uh, I have designed a uh, like panel in the Excel, uh, okay. like <laughs> companies that I want to work in mm -hmm. as an intern, the HRs, contacts, their right. numbers, emails. Yeah. I have all segregated out. Right. I have made my CV. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the CV is right for them or not. I have to alter it. So, like, we are we don't know how to mail them. That comes in email etiquettes, I know. Yeah, yeah. But how should we proceed with it, like, as an MCOM first yeah. year? Right. So, a couple of suggestions. One is, uh, you know, uh, I do understand that this is a new institution, right, year two. Um, right. Uh, you may want to find out from other Manipal institutions or other institutions how they channelize in getting an intern, internship program, right? Um, typically, it's driv driven by placement cell because the numbers are huge. Uh, but at the same time, nothing is stopping an individual. So we are three in number, sir. Huh? We are three in number. Three in number, okay, yeah. fine. MCOM. Okay, right. Uh, typically, it's also driven by the individual, right? Um, again, the main source would be LinkedIn reaching out uh, to the HR leaders or the placement leaders of various organization. The success rate of that is less. So we have only one month time period for our internship. Sorry? Five weeks, two months. Okay, okay. So how can we like talk it out to the organization? Right, so uh, when I say through LinkedIn, you need to establish contacts uh, with the organization's placement cell. You got to find out. Uh, let's say you select an ABC company, you go to find out ABC company HR, all the names will get listed, then placements, right? Then when you start connecting with them, then you start saying, hey, this is what I've been doing, do you offer internship? Uh, my point is LinkedIn success uh, for these internship is very less. Alternatively, what you may want to look at is find out how your seniors have cracked, where have they done it, can they recommend you? Through recommendation, it's a lot easier. For example, if one of your relatives or your senior friends has done it in any particular organization, internship, then through that person, you can channelize your request. That will move faster when the person is already in the system. Yeah? Yes, sir. But again, I, I do understand your... Sir, uh, do uh, Ernest and Young provide any five weeks program for yeah, we do. placements. Internship. Yeah, I just answered that some time back. Yeah, we yeah so it. how can we proceed it? Can you please elaborate yeah. it? <laughs> right. Um, it depends on uh, uh, the requirement for the function or the sub-function of some functions they feel they need to have interns so that they have more helping hands to do a particular you know, task. They absorb them. But some functions, they are a bit hesitant. They're saying, no, we are good for now. Uh, but at a company level, they do not take interns. Uh, it, at a process or a function level, depending on the demand of work, they might want to do that. That's how typically these uh, consulting firms work. But the tried and tested route will be through someone who has got an intern program try to capitalize on that organization through the person. The references work really well for internship. Thanks. Cool. Okay, I think we are on time, we're good. Thank you, uh, Dr. Santosh and Dr. Sailajat. Thank you, guys. Okay.
hope that was Yeah, thank you uh, so much, having uh, come to the last part. And I deem it my uh, honor to be proposing vote of thanks. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Dilip, for uh, the effort. And guys, let me tell you, he, just, uh, he was just mentioning about networking and all that. No, it was just, just one message is all it took for me. I just reached out to him blindly without knowing him. I just messaged, and he was more than happy to come here and address. And again, let me tell you, it has taken him one exact, see, one and a half hours, or more than that, one hour, 40 minutes is all that he has taken to travel from all the way from there till here. And again, equal number of hours, equal number of time, that is almost two hours is going to take to reach back. So that, that is a kind of interest, and that's a kind of willingness that he has shown. And uh, we are sincerely very, very thankful and uh, grateful uh, for you, uh, Dilip, for this kind of effort. And, and I hope and I hope and wish that the students have taken note because we keep saying in class certain things which will not be taken seriously because teachers will teach, right? Teachers' job, they'll come, they'll say something, and they'll go back. But then when you exactly hear the same exact things from a practicing industry professional, that is where probably it hits, where it hurts. So now I seriously uh, wish and hope that you guys have taken some takeaways and understood what is it that you are required to do and understand where and what you are exactly required to focus upon. And you will and you might act accordingly. Thank you so much for uh, your time and uh, hoping that this particular session, uh, you, uh, you, you will focus on more uh, takeaways and learn from it. And uh, thank you so much, Dilip, once again, on behalf of all of us, the students, the faculty, the head of the department, and all of us here. Thank you so much. And I request uh, you to accept this uh, token of gratitude from us. I request the students to come. Uh, yeah, please finish that. I want the students to quickly come this side so that we can take a group picture.